Hello, my name is Mick West, and I wanted to share with you uh, the progress I've been making on Metabunk's SITREC tool, which is a situation recreation tool, and specifically the night sky tool, which you can use to simulate Starlink satellite flares, and I'm going to show you how to do that. So to get to it, it's, uh, it's just a web app. Anyone can use it, assuming you have a reasonably uh, good computer and uh, a browser like Chrome, uh, or Safari or Edge would work. You just simply go to metabunk.org slash sitrec question mark sitch equals night sky. And it'll take a little while to load because the textures uh, in the use for the globe are fairly large. Uh, but once it's loaded, you will see this globe here. And you should be able to like move it around. It should move fairly fast. Um, what we're seeing here is a simulation of the world as it is right now. It's uh, 350 and in the afternoon on Saturday, December the 30th. And I'm over here in Sacramento. It will automatically detect your location. It will ask you whether you want to uh, share your location or not. It just uses an approximate location. You see here, round it down to two decimal places. Uh, and we see that the night is uh, coming in and we're over here. East Coast is already in darkness. And we also see all these little dots. These little dots are Starlink satellites, and these are actually the latest positions. This is where they actually are right now. And I can make them a little bit brighter uh, over here. Use the satellite brightness. And you can see behind the Earth, we have the night sky with stars and moons and planets and things like that. So you can see other things. So Starlink satellite flares happen when you're in darkness and you look towards uh, the sun. So let's see what happens if I rewind to say yesterday. I'm going to change the day to 29 and I'm going to reduce uh, the time to be uh, earlier in the day. So this is like 4, 4.50 a.m. Now I'm over here in Sacramento. The sun's over there. So, you know, what happens when we change the time? We advance the time a little bit, which I'm going to do by pressing down these square brackets. We have these little little hints here that tell you which key to use. So advance the start time. And you see the terminator, this line here between light and dark, gets closer to us. Now, when it's a certain distance away, you'll notice as At near the horizon, you'll start to see this, this kind of flickering of individual stars and those are individual satellites. And those are Starlink satellites that are flaring. Now they're flaring because they're reflecting the sun. If we zoom out a little bit, you can see the sun's over here. I'm down over here. These satellites are up in the sky up here. And if you draw a line from here to here, off the bottom of these satellites, it will point towards the sun. And in fact, we can actually do that by going over here and adding in the sun angle arrows. So this is showing us that from my position here in Sacramento, uh, if I looked over here, which I can now do, I will see Starlink satellites that are flaring. And if I kind of like zip forward and backwards through the timeline, you'll see there's like a, a whole bunch of them zipping backwards and forwards. And this is what people see. These are these uh, Starlink satellite flares seen by pilots and seen by people on the ground. And uh, it happens pretty much all the time. You can just basically stand, look towards the sun and you will, you will see some, uh, assuming atmospheric conditions are okay. Now this is all well and good for uh, being on the ground, but what happens if you're in a plane? Well, if you're in a plane, what we could do, we could kind of move our start point. If I hold down the L button, the L key, you can move it around to different locations anywhere in the world, but generally we're interested in the United States. And you'll see this locations where you can see these, these, these flares, like uh, tonight or yesterday, last night in the early morning, you would have been able to see them looking in that direction. If you're in a plane, you'll be at a higher altitude. So we can adjust the altitude of the camera here to do that. And you'll see the camera is actually moving up and down as I do that. Um, so you can kind of approximate that if you know approximately where the plane is and you can see whether if, when they're looking out of the windows of the plane, would they have seen these things? But a better way to do that is to use uh, the actual track of the plane. If you know what the plane was and you know the actual time and date, you can just drag that in. So I've got an example here. 
Here's a uh, KML file, which is an ADSB track, which is basically the locations uh, of the plane at a given time. So if I drop that in here, you'll see it appears on the map of the United States. Now we can't use it just yet because uh, we need to adjust the start time. So if I go to the start time here, we know that this particular track is from the uh, April the 15th at about six in the morning. So if I go to uh, five, no, sorry, four, four, 15, and go to six in the morning, and we'll see here a little bit of the track has turned pink. That means that we can now use that track as uh, our camera location. You have to switch it over here with camera motion to KML track, and now you see we've locked on to that particular track. Uh, this bar down the bottom, what, what I've done is I've just set it up so it, it works for a 10 minute segment. And this bar here represents those 10 minutes. But if you change the start time of that 10 minute second, segment by moving, say the, the hour, increment the hour to seven, it moves one hour forward. And again, we can use these, uh, these keys over here, the square bracket keys to zip forward fairly rapidly. Now we don't see any uh, Starlink flares yet. Ooh, this one over here. But what we can do is to help find these styling flares is turn back on those sun angle arrows, but also turn on this flare region. This will tell us where we would expect to be looking. Now, if we move forward, you'll see eventually, fairly quickly, in fact, we start to see flares in that direction. So if we're looking out of the left-hand side of the plane, uh, we would have seen these uh, on the horizon. Let me turn that... Uh, layer region off now that we've found it and I can just uh, basically hit play oops I can hit play here basically which means turning off the pause thing here and the plane will be moving along at plane speed which isn't very hard, fast when you're looking from you know, up in space but it is actually zipping along there and we can see the Starlink satellites appear and disappear and they do this typical thing they last about between 10 and 30 seconds uh, because they need to be reflecting the sun and some will be brighter than others the uh, brown line is the actual reflection line and the green line is the line to the sun and when those lines are very close it will actually be a lot brighter so let me just zip forward a little bit and you'll see more there's a whole bunch of them there showing up and you see some of them are very bright um, the bigger ones here are brighter and that's the ones that's where the brown arrow and the green arrow are more or less the same and again you can kind of uh, see what's going on here here's the sunny side of the earth and there's the sun over there and these are the satellites that are kind of halfway between you and the sunny side and you bounce light off them and you can see them and uh, if you want to once you've done this, if you want to share it with someone, you can actually create a permalink. But I mean, before I do that, uh, this was back in, um, what was it, back in April. So the default Starlink satellites that are loaded are the current ones. Uh, eventually, I'm going to make it so it will get the historical ones. But right now, what you can do is you can take a, um, you can take an older um, TLE file and just drop it in and you see the satellite is called change positions there and that's because they're actually using the correct ones for that uh, that date and time because I preloaded that one but you have to kind of find that yourself eventually I'll make it so you don't have to do that and uh, it'll be very straightforward but this was a this was an actual case pilots saw these these um, these Starlink satellites flaring out of the side. They thought there was some kind of UAP or UFO. Uh, they posted a video of it, and we tracked it down. And it used to be a bit fiddlier than this because I had to kind of hardwire in the code all of these files. But now you can just uh, drag and drop. And once you drag and drop, you can go down, click on permalink, and that will change your URL here to be one that actually will remember all of this. It will rehost this KML file. It will rehost any TLE that you dropped in. And when we now go to this location, um, it will load it all up again and you're basically back to where you were before so you can share things. So if I wanted to, I could you know, zip forward a little bit 
Um, all right, let's see. This is something I haven't done. They need to reset it to camera track, KML track. So uh, zip forward here. And there we go. So if you wanted to say, I don't know, show what it looked like with uh, um, from a different position, you could just make a permalink for that. And now we could have an extra one here, which has that one. This is the previous one. And then this is the new one. Two different versions of the same thing, just two different permalinks. And if you you can if you make any more changes, just click on permanent link again. It will get you a new permanent link, and you can uh, you can use that. So yeah, that's where I am right now. Um, things that I hope to do in the future are allow people to drag and drop a video file in, so that they can actually sync up the video with the uh, the display of the Starlink. And uh, hopefully, I can make it so that you can get the historical data. Uh, without having to kind of jump through hoops, which you do at the moment. Uh, and I, next year, coming up in a few days, I hope to make this entire project be open source. It's already accessible to anyone. You just need to be... Oh, actually, I forgot to mention, if you want to make a permanent permalink using this here, you have to uh, be logged into Metabunk. <clears throat> so you need to actually create an account on Metabunk and be logged in. Uh, which I imagine initially all the people using this will have a Metabunk account anyway, but uh, this is just the way I'm kind of protecting the, uh, um, you know, the resources of my server by not allowing it all to be accessible. But all you got to do is make a, 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 a an account, very straightforward. Uh, so yes, I hope to make it uh, open source next year. I've already set up a GitHub and I'm kind of working on towards making the code itself more accessible. Uh, if anybody's interested in helping uh, me with that in any way you can think of, then uh, let me know. And uh, hopefully this will solve a few cases for people. People have been seeing these Starlink satellites a lot. They don't People don't really understand exactly what's going on, but I think this actually is quite helpful in kind of visualizing what's happening. And uh, it might help people be a little bit less uh, concerned about what they see out of the window in the future. There it is, and I hope you all have a happy new year.